Everglades National Park has partnered up with Miami-Dade College to do this Park Teachers Program. And it stands for Parks as Resources for Knowledge, P-A-R-K. So we partnered with professors here at Miami-Dade College and with some of our own staff to create a program that's science inquiry and inquiry-based science uh, that takes you out into the field. So we'll be doing a pre-site, which is why we're here today in your class. Next week, we'll go out into the field and do an on-site visit, and then we'll come back for the third week and we'll do a post-site follow-up. So we do have a big overarching question that we are trying to answer in our three days together. Why do you suppose some ecosystems need fire to be healthy? Bigger trees don't die with the fire, just the little shrubs on the bottom? Um, in site two, you can actually see the sky, and in site one, you can't, you can't see anything. I would say we're part of an ecosystem. You could write two conclusions. It didn't do anything. Did it make the water a little, little dirty looking? The ashes have the most nitrates, the most nutrients for the plants. Trial two. Write down what you're observing. All right, so this is an important piece. We've learned a bunch of important pieces that we're going to take with us to answer the rest of our question. And so the next step will be next week when we go out into the field, we'll give you a chance to collect more evidence and actual data that will help you to figure the, some of these things out for yourself. Be sure you bring your hat, get your sunscreen on, or bring it. Scientists we are, right? Yes, we are. It looks like the jungle. <laughs> It's so many trees uh, as far as the eye can see, so it's kind of, I guess, I'm pretty sure you'll get lost if you don't know where you're going. I want to learn some more about it, all the things that the Everglade brings in, to South Florida and why it's important for us. First of all, again, welcome to Everglades National Park. Um, how many of you have been here before? Okay. Anybody remember our essential question for the day? Why do you why suppose, suppose some ecosystems, ecosystems need fire to be healthy? We're going to start off with kind of a general um, observation of the pine rockland habitat and then we'll have a little discussion and then we have a series of stations for you to move through to take some more observations and to gather more evidence that will hopefully help you answer this essential question. Oh, there's a hole. So we're going to be focusing on fire adaptations, habitat, shrub height, and also sunlight and vegetation. Good job. Get a lot of observations. Good. Good. All right, what about did anyone look all around them? We got a lot of ground stuff. What about did anyone look up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw like half a tree trunk and it was burnt. Um, what I did see, and I, I, it was my inference, is that it could have been a provoked fire. LPK is for Long Pine Key, which is the name of this area. And the yellow line through here is the trail. Okay. And we've designated two areas on here, area one and area two. Area one is the Pine Rockland habitat, and area two is the hammock. So who would like to be the field technician? They handle all the instruments and teach others in the group how to use them. Who wants to be field tech? I'll do it. Okay, great. Fire adaptation pink. Okay, I gotta find the pink ribbon. Okay, let's go. The first example would be the the stump. Everyone agree? Yep. So you would write the stump on the top. Yeah. Good. It's very crispy. It's crispy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thicker. What evidence do you see that living things can survive fire in this habitat? The idea is for you to take the information and what you learned today and use it with your students. This so what's the park living. like? This one's rough. It's built to withstand the heat. So do you think the flaky bark could protect the yes. tree from burning? 111. 1, 12. Oops. Okay, this is a densitometer. So, what does a densitometer measure? Of the canopy? Yes. No, I don't see anything. So, what percentage do you have? Zero. Perfect. Use the light meter to measure the correct amount of light penetrating the canopy. because I still see some sunlight coming in.
Okay, you're there. Oh. Okay, a little more. A little bit more? We're measuring the height of the trees and the different uh, habitats that they have. Right. Since these aren't uh, around the fire, that they're more uh, durable, they're stronger. Taller. And the plants okay. in the hammock oh, have short. grown taller than in the pine rockland so far. These are probably double the size. 288. Okay. We just said for number one, how do plants and animals in the pine rockland survive fire? It has different meat. layers. It protects it, like you said, like we were talking mm -hmm. about. The taller trees survive better because the vegetation is up higher. So what the animal does is the bird will usually leave because it can fly, so it'll leave when the fire, and also the crow, the butterfly. The ants could just go underground to the little holes. Our question was, what is the effect of repeated fires on shrub heights? And what we concluded is that the repeated fires aren't allowing the plants to fully develop. We do believe, though, if there would be no more fires, it would grow, just like the other ones did. In the hammock. In the hammock, which would probably destroy the pine rockland ecosystem, which is probably why we purposely have fires. Burn them down. <laughs> in the pine islands, there's more light, which creates more vegetation. And when you have more vegetation, I mean more light, there's more vegetation in different types of vegetation, meaning um, we would have more source of food for animals here in the pine rocklands. That's why we create the fires, so we could continue to have this ecosystem for the animals that do live here. How would you characterize your observations from being here in the field compared to the bush? A lot more... Mm -hmm. More in depth. More in depth. No. Better understanding. What else? Surprising. You had more sensory experiences out here, correct? Yeah. Yes. Than you could ever have from just looking at the pictures. I honestly think it was an incredible experience. I, it was so in depth and I was able to understand it so much more because we were doing a hands-on activity instead of just focusing on just photos and things like that. I still want to know who starts those fires, the controlled fires. So I'm looking forward to the next class. We really had a beautiful day out there and I think you guys really started to make some good connections and, and got some good experiences out there. We're still working on our essential question today and I think we're pretty close to answering it. All right, so in Everglades National Park, to maintain the ecosystem, we have managers actually go out and light what we call prescribed fires. And what we're going to ask you guys to do now is to be park managers. You guys are going to be part of fire management in Everglades National Park. And we're going to have you plan a prescribed fire in the area that we were in. We all know that the Pine Rockland is fire adapted. The hammock ecosystem is fire sensitive. Listen, what evidence can you provide to support prescribed burning in the Pine Rockland? We need it so that the ecosystem can survive. The wind's going north, so the fire's going this way, and how are we going to stop it over here then? What value does the Pine Rockland like, provide for the Everglades? It's different, ha if the value is different, different habitats, habitats for different animals that don't and live in the hammock. I would like a, volu a group to and volunteer to go rate. first. We're starting our fire here, we have the firefighter here, we have the drip torch. We work, we're working the fire here, the wind is going up north. We want to protect the hammock, so we have a firefighter protecting the hammock since the hammock is fire sensitive. The fire did its job. We had the helicopter dropping, getting water from the lake, and conta um, containing the fire. Very, good. very good. Okay. Interesting. Great job. I like it. I think that the program is unique. I think we've spent a lot of time in developing the curriculum, the park rangers and the professors that have started writing the curriculum. I think it's one of the best programs around and I think it, it, it will mean a lot to the future students of Miami-Dade County. The goal of uh, working with the park teacher program was for me to make sure that my students could become the best science teachers that they could possibly be. And part of that would be to understand the 5E model and also inquiry-based learning, to work hands-on and to be engaged in the learning. That's the, our ultimate goal. We want our students to be active learners. I think that before this, I had the concept of the 5E model and I could understand it, but I think that this whole experience let me see how it, it can be actually implemented. You remember the experience that you have, so you remember the information that comes along with the memory and the experience.
she's one. <laughs> she gets an A in the course. <laughs>